but I want to change God's church. This is a satanic thing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless it. Hi, thanks for tuning in to Armor of God. And please allow me to start this video by thanking you for taking the time to be here with us. And hopefully, you'll always learn something useful for your own spiritual warfare with the videos we've put together for you. In 1972, Pope Paul VI talked about something in relation to Rome. Through some fissure, the smoke of Satan has entered the temple of God. There is doubt, uncertainty, problems, unrest, dissatisfaction, confrontation. There is no longer trust of the church. And so I would like to share with you what Father Carlos Martins thinks of this. There's a priest I know, a really saintly priest, and, and we talked about this one time, and he has really a definite opinion uh, as to the words of, of, of Pope Paul VI and, and, and how, how diagnostic and prophetic they were. Diagnostic in the sense that when everything toppled kind of after the Second Vatican Council, you know, no one could have foreseen that. But it also pointed to the fact that what seemed rosy and good leading up to the council, churches were full, there were lots of vocations. Uh, the very fact that all of these things toppled so quickly, the bottom fell out from under the vocations, the people of God, you know, there, there was a wholesale movement to questioning and doubt, and, and the fact that, you know, contraception was embraced. And and many people in the church, many clergy, in, in my opinion, I think most of the clergy in the church, most, certainly not all, are not pro-life. Like they, they, well, you know, like we, we look at the circumstances of people and it's really hard and therefore it's okay to murder a preborn life. Like, I, I mean, I encounter clergy like this all the time. There was a rot that was there, but it was beneath the surface. And then the conditions created following the council just kind of exposed to that. So he believes, this, this saintly priest I know, that the, the fallout was God's retribution to expose the rot that was there. And the words of Paul VI are prophetic in the sense that they have identified what is the case for so many people in the church, so Catholics. So in the past, you disagreed with the church, you left the church. But the disagreeers, the, the discontents, the malcontents have remained in the church now. This is different. You, you have theologians, you have clergy teaching in the name of the church, and their teaching is at variance with the church. This is a new thing. This is a satanic thing. Uh, th this, this is an act of rebellion. Not just a rejection of the teaching lot on a personal level, but I want to change God's church. This is a satanic thing. And I would also like to share something that was said by an exorcist from the Archdiocese of Barcelona in Catalonia, Spain, Father Juan Gallego. Recalling one case in particular during one interview, Father Gallego said, There was a boy whom the demon would set his shirt on fire at night and things like that. He told me what the demons were proposing him to do. If you make a pact with us, you'll never have to go through any more of what you're going through now. He'd also explain that addictions are a type of possession because when people are going through a crisis, they suffer more. They can feel hopeless. People feel like they've got the devil inside. And Father Gallego also said during the interview that in his experience, pride is the sin the devil likes the most. And we know what caused the fall of Lucifer when he refused God's plan and feel insulted by it. And for the following story that I'd like to share with you, I would first like to share this particular clip of Monsignor Rossetti that I've shared with all of you in the past. There is a way in which abortion is an un a wrongful death and it opens uh, the, the door to Satan. Wrongful deaths. There was a house uh, uh, a few miles from here that was totally infested by demons. And what happened in the house was sex trafficking, drugs, and a shootout, and a lot of people died. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, so they called in an exorcist because the, the house was infested and all sorts of wild things going on in the house after they all left. Well, that's because these wrongful deaths and these evil and sins opens the doors to uh, Satan. And there's a story related to what Monsignor Rossetti just said in the clip that I'd like to share with you. I know this is an old story, but I thought it's something interesting to share so we can relate to what Monsignor Rossetti shared earlier. Anyway, what happened was, 
a building that had been originally constructed as a Jewish synagogue, then used as a Greek Orthodox church, was sold and reopened as an abortion clinic, and it later became the largest abortion facility in western Michigan. Local pro-life activists worked and prayed for many years to shut it down, but to no avail. And it was not until 2004 when they had a big breakthrough as they were able to convince the owner of the building to sell it to them. And then they immediately evicted the abortion practice. After eight heartbreaking years and an estimated 20,000 abortions, the abortion clinic closed. The overjoyed pro-lifers made plans to turn the building into a pro-life pregnancy resource center. According to the new owners, a day or two after taking control of the building, a small group of Christian pro-life leaders gathered in the building to pray. They chose to specifically pray by the back alley entrance that had been used by the abortionist to enter and exit the building. They held hands in a circle and prayed that God would cleanse the space of evil. But suddenly, at the very moment a local pastor in their group concluded their prayer, the back alley door swung open on its own and a rush of air went through the room out the door. And a few seconds later, a cool breeze began blowing in from the open door. The group quietly walked back to the front of the building. While meditating on what they had just witnessed, a neighbor stopped by and asked what they had done with the statue of a demon that had been on the roof. And here's the weird part. The pro-life group had never seen such a statue and had not removed anything. Yet the woman insisted she had seen it on top of the building for some time, but that it was now gone. And there's also something else that I'd like to share with you, if you don't mind. For your information, there's a museum in Rome that is called Museum of the Souls of Purgatory. Well, to be more precise, it's not far from the Vatican, and it's actually a church that contains a tiny museum with a unique purpose. To convince people that purgatory exists, and that their departed loved ones need their prayers. It only takes up one room and has just one glass case with just a dozen items or so. Yet it is one of the most unique collections anywhere in the world. Objects supposedly singed by the fiery hands of souls in purgatory. Its collection is made up not of sacred art, but of actual physical evidence purporting to prove the existence of purgatory, namely the tangible marks souls in purgatory left in order to convince their loved ones to pray for them. The scorched papers and clothing displayed in the vestry of the Church of the Sacred Heart of Suffrage and Priety testify to the trials of those who managed to avoid going to hell, but sought escape from the purifying fires of purgatory. The history of the museum dates back to 1897 when a fire destroyed a small chapel. While surveying the damage, the parish priest Father Victor found some burn marks on the wall behind the altar that looked like a human face with a sad expression. Convinced it was a sign left by a soul trapped in purgatory trying to get help from the living, Father Victor was inspired to seek out similar occurrences. His search resulted in the collection of objects and photographs on display today. In the beginning of this channel, I used to design my video thumbnails with images like this. I'm sure you've seen this type of images being used by other channels as well, especially when the videos are addressing subjects related to exorcism. But after a while, I've tried my best to go for the more abstract approach. What I'm trying to say is, there's something that Father Carlos Martin said in one particular interview that really hit home. Somehow what he said helped me to decide what type of images I should go for when I design thumbnails, or even the type of images used within the video itself. The manifestations of the devil, the devil will manifest, but I'll tell you this. Um, as one, one's career as an exorcist, if we can speak like that, as, as, as one gains experience year by year as an exorcist, the diabolical signs begin to diminish. Uh, and, and they're initially there that the devil kind of uses these parlor tricks uh, to try to manipulate you into a place of fear. Oh my gosh, look at the power of the devil. He's, he's, he's having this, this small child is walking up the wall backwards and then walking across the ceiling as if the law of gravity didn't apply to him. The first time you would see something like that, the hair on the back of your head might stand up. What about the 89th time that you see that? What about the 289th time that you see that? Your reaction is going to be different. And at a, at a certain point, seeing that isn't even going to stop the yawn that you feel like letting out of your mouth, right? And, that, and that's, just, that's just a fact. We get used to reality. So as the effect of these parlor tricks don't produce what the devil wants to produce. He abandons them because uh, at the end of the day, they're not, they're not achieving what he wants them to achieve, and that is making you afraid. And so he doesn't spend his energy on those. Uh, he spends his energy on, on just resisting what you are doing as an exorcist. 
Uh, so Father Father Amorth in the book, he talks about in his very first exorcism, he saw levitation. Uh, so the, the victim was levitated into the air, um, was suspended by nothing. He never saw it again in his entire career. As time goes on, those extraordinary manifestations, they just kind of go away. And now you have uh, the resistance of a belligerent, rebellious enemy of God, and that's what you've got to attack. If I bring in someone else in the room, so if I'm training a priest, for example, who has been assigned by his bishop to be an exorcist and he's apprenticing, I can expect to see more extraordinary signs because now the devil's got a brand new audience and he cracks his knuckles and, and, and wants to display what he wants in order to get into the mind and the heart of this new person. This is the very thing that we uh, that 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 we seek to resist. And this is the very thing that I'm going to brief that individual on before we enter into the room. This is what you probably are going to see. Um, and you you just have to imagine as you experience these things, imagine this is the 289th time that you're seeing this and let that guide what how you would behave when that happens by the way just before we're coming to the end of this video i came across this clip and to be honest i am completely speechless by it this isn't the way we should do things and let me repeat that this is not the right way not with the bible taped to a baseball bat a pastor by the name greg locke smashed a barbie dream house with a bible taped to a baseball bat watch yeah our Global Vision store, we ought to start selling some Bible bats in the name of Jesus. Because what some of you need to understand is you've been delivered from a demon, but you've not pulled down the stronghold yet. you got to get rid of the triggers on that iPhone. you got to get rid of the triggers on that Netflix. you got to lose her number. you got to lose his number. The demon comes out when you expel it. The stronghold comes down when you demolish it with the Bible. You gotta start tearing that mess up. You gotta break it down. You gotta cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself. You gotta get in the Bible and beat that stronghold to death. Change your phone number if you got to. So, do I believe in deliverance? Yes. But I'm done with repeat customers for 20 years. It either works or it don't. We decree them curses off. We tried them demons out. But then as a pastor, I got to teach you how to be disciplined. Well then, that is all for the video this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. And hopefully you've learned a lot from this video. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation down in the comments below. And I would like to thank you in advance for your continuous support and contribution. Until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.